Welcome back to D-Lab, everybody. This is a follow-up video to the 572B linear amplifier project. So after posting the video showing the low output experience, I received many responses, but two of them really got my attention. First question was, is why didn't you connect the center tap of the filament power transformer? Good question. The next was, you should remove all those legacy components for the input voltage metering. That was not a normal thing on a grounded grid amplifier. So I have performed those two things and I'm gonna show you the result. So to address the first question, why did I leave the center tab on the filament transformer disconnected? Well, originally this amplifier ran four 1625 output tubes and had a 12 volt AC filament transformer. The center tap on that transformer was never connected and it showed that in the schematic. So I kind of narrowed my focus on that. I didn't look deeper and of course the diagrams online using this configuration did have the center tap. So yes, it was my error. I just didn't look further. To address the second comment, why did I leave the old legacy RF voltage monitoring circuits installed? Well, the meter had that function and I thought it would be okay to leave that intact and maybe it is, but I agree it did not show that on any grounded grid and it could affect the signal quality going to the cathode. So it's been removed. Alright, so I've made the changes to the amplifier and I've updated the schematic which I will post in this video. So first, I connected the center tap of the 6.3 volt filament transformer. Second, I removed all that RF level monitoring circuitry from the cathode side of the 572B tube. And third, I installed a keying circuit. So when the transmitter activates, it will automatically turn on the plate voltage to the amplifier. So let's give this thing a test, see what you think. Okay, here we go. Test time for the LA400 amplifier. I'm still using the Johnson Challenger as the exciter, so we're just going to focus on the amplifier and the watt meter. The watt meter is at the 0 to 500 watt scale. I have the Challenger in phone right now, so I'm going to key the mic, which now will key up the amplifier without having to turn on the plate switch. Here we go. So that is phone. You can see the uh, plate meter going up with the modulation. Now let me switch over to CW. Now we're in CW mode. Coupling is still at one, so we're still putting out low power. Key in it. See your output power. Now watch what happens. Bring our coupling to position two. Quite a bit more. Sorry about the hands in the way. Dip the plate. And I'm seeing about 200 watts. And now I actually have plate current on the Challenger. You can see me adjusting that too. So the transmitter, or should I say amplifier, appears to be working great. Okay, let's sweep the bottom of the amplifier and I'll show you the changes that I've made. Obviously all that RF volt input circuitry is gone. On the filament transformer I was able to recover the center tap lead which had been cut and added that to ground. This is the key in circuitry. So there is a 5 volt AC transformer that powers the little D-Lab PTT board that keys the amplifier. There's an RCA jack on the back which simply grounds that line and that's what keys the high voltage of the amplifier and we added a red LED lamp that illuminates the meter when it's in transmit mode. So I believe the circuit is solid now. Thanks for all for brainstorming with me. You got me to consider things that I normally would have overlooked. Next step is to get it on the air but I think we're on the right road. 